Among the grand narratives of victory in human history, a unique chapter is dedicated to the biggest losers, those who dared greatly but faced the bitter sting of defeat. These are not stories of forgotten names, but of brave souls, from daring conquerors and investors to even strategic masterminds whose ambitions crumbled, leaving them as the unsung heroes of failure. Join us as we embark on this journey to the annals of history to discover the captivating and often daring stories of those who, despite their grand dreams, found themselves on the wrong side of destiny. The Bold Ruler Who Challenged Genghis Khan In the annals of history, only a few individuals can claim to have conquered vast territories and built formidable empires, let alone virtually defeating all their enemies. However, one such extraordinary figure exists, and his name was Genghis Khan, a man who was often regarded as having come close to conquering the entire world. Born in 1162, Genghis Khan founded and ruled the Mongol Empire from 1206 till his death in 1227. According to historical records, Genghis Khan was one of the most formidable and terrifying figures in the world, having achieved this through widespread massacres and genocide conquests with an estimated death toll of about 40 million even surpassing the combined fatalities of both world wars. Yet, during Genghis Khan's conquest in China, he encountered the Khwarazmian Emperor, Shah Muhammad II, who insulted him and dared to take action. Unfortunately for the Khwarazmian ruler, this bold decision would be his undoing, transforming him into an epic loser. And so, in 1218, a significant diplomatic and trade mission was dispatched to Shah Muhammad II as Genghis Khan sought to establish friendly relations and trade ties with his empire. Unfortunately, suspicions arose in Muhammad's court, leading to the unjust arrest of the Mongol delegation on charges of spying, along with confiscating their valuable goods. Undeterred by this setback, Genghis Khan attempted to maintain a diplomatic approach and sent three more envoys to demand the denial of the governor's actions and the surrender of the accused official. Tragically, Muhammad II responded with extreme measures, executing the envoys and all members of the previous mission. This brutal act compelled Genghis Khan to shift his focus from the Chinese campaign to addressing the growing threat than the Khwarazmian Empire. And so, Genghis Khan mobilized a force exceeding 100,000 troops for a swift and strategic campaign against the Khwarazmian forces. Despite being outnumbered, the Mongols executed a brilliant military offensive, catching Muhammad II off guard and preventing any chance of recovery. The invasion unfolded as an army masterpiece leading to the downfall of the Khwarazmian Empire by 1221. Fleeing the relentless pursuit of Genghis Khan's generals, Subutai and Jibay, Muhammad II met a tragic end on a small Caspian island. The once thriving empire of Khwarazm was transformed into a deserted wasteland, with millions perished due to Genghis Khan's ruthless tactics. Entire cities were massacred for offering resistance, and captives were used as human shields. Standing amidst the ruins of the once grand city of Bukhara, Genghis Khan declared himself the Flail of God, delivering a chilling message to survivors. If you had not committed great sins, God would not have sent a punishment like me upon you. A Great Loser In 1806, France was at war with the Prussians, engaging in a twin battle known as the Battle of Jena and Auerstadt in October of that year. After France won the battle, 
Emperor Napoleon chased down all the Prussians who had tried to escape captive. He had planned to trap them, grab their garrisons, and make sure they couldn't meet up with their Russian friends who also wanted to go to war with France. Hence, the one strong Prussian army, now defeated at the Jena Auerstedt War, faced a French cavalry squad led by General Antoine Lasalle. With about 500 horse riders and a couple of light cannons, General Lasalle looked at the strong city of Stettin, which was guarded by 10,000 men and 281 guns under the leadership of Lieutenant General Frederick von Romberg, a military loyalist who had been in the military for over 50 years, fighting alongside Frederick the Great in the Seven Years' War. The city of Stettin itself was abundantly supplied by the British Royal Navy, whose ships navigated the port freely and were filled with provisions. On October 29, 1806, General Lasalle sent a brave messenger with a white flag to ask the city of Stettin to give up, promising to treat the garrison well. But General von Romberg refused. As the sun set, General Lasalle gave them an ultimatum, demanding they surrender the city to him by 8 a.m. or the town would be stormed by 50,000 men. After hearing the threat, General von Romberg decided to give up. Hence, that night, he and the city leaders worked out the terms of surrender. As the sun rose, the once proud garrison walked out in perfect order the following day, surrendering to General Lasalle. However, on surrendering the city, General von Romberg noticed General Lasalle bluffed having fewer than a thousand men. Realizing he had messed up, he wanted to retract the deal, but it was too late. He had to stick to the surrender deal, losing the battle to General LaSalle. Eventually in 1809, General von Romberg was court-martialed and convicted to life in prison, where he was said to have died two months later. And so in history, General Lassalle became a hero. Meanwhile, General von Romberg, who was once a notable leader, was regarded as a loser. The Dummy Who Invented the Parachute In the early 20th century, there lived a man named Franz Reichelt, a tailor by trade with dreams that soared higher than the highest peaks. Born in Austria, Franz Reichelt found himself immersed in the enchanting streets of France, captivated by the wonders of flight since his youth. In 1911, Aero Club de France, an aviation club in France, began a challenge, offering a tantalizing prize of 10,000 francs to anyone who can invent a successful parachute. Being a visionary, Franz seized this challenge eagerly, envisioning a parachute suit a majestic cloak with a silk hood weighing 20 pounds and spanning an impressive 340 square feet. Undeterred by the initial failures of testing his design on dummies tossed from the safety of his fifth floor apartment, Franz was determined to prove his creation's worth. Hence, he devised an audacious plan, a daring jump from the iconic Eiffel Tower. After securing permission from the Paris police, Franz stood ready for his audacious experiment on the chilly morning of February 4th, 1912. And so on that crisp morning, Franz ascended the Eiffel Tower. As the crowd of journalists gathered, eager to witness history being made, two film crews set up, one on the ground and another on the tower, ready to capture the moment. When Franz reached the tower's first deck, the crowd below began to stir, all confused as no dummy was in sight. But as he mounted the guardrail, it slowly dawned on them that Franz intended to test his creation not with a dummy, but by risking his own life. Hence his friends, journalists, and even a concerned guard pleaded with him to stop the experiment. Yet, despite pleas from everyone, Franz remained resolute in his pursuit. And with a cheerful a French for see you soon, Franz climbed on a stool 
placed on a table by the guardrail, attempting to fly in his parachute. At precisely 8.22 a.m. that morning, he leaped into the void air of the Eiffel Tower. Unfortunately, the parachute suit proved to be a both literal and metaphorical flop, landing him on the freezing harsh ground of the Eiffel Tower with an impact of a six-inch crater, signifying the unfortunate end of the dreamer's bold adventure. Now unknown to Franz, an American had triumphantly built a parachute, soaring 225 feet from the Statue of Liberty two days earlier, introducing the parachute design that would become the standard in the parachute world. The Biggest Loser in Chinese History The powerful Han Dynasty thrived in ancient China for ages, bringing prosperity to the vast empire. Yet as time passed, troubles emerged, hinting at the downfall of this once mighty dynasty. In its final years, the Han Dynasty struggled with internal conflicts, as various uprisings spread across the land. One of those conflicts was the Yellow Turban Rebellion, fueled by discontent, surged through the empire, challenging the imperial armies and prompting a desperate plea for help. Hence, the regional strongmen attempted to stop the rebellions. However, this led to an unintended outcome, the rise of warlords with private armies that overshadowed the imperial forces. Among these warlords, Cao Cao stood out. Cao Cao was a skilled tactician who triumphed over northern warlords, bringing a semblance of unity. However, as he turned his attention southward, Cao Cao claimed to command a legendary army of 250,000 men, though the reality was formidable, but not as massive as he boasted. Nevertheless, despite needing better naval strategies, he had a wild ambition to expand his rule to the seas along the Yangtze River in ancient China. Little did he know that a hidden plot brewed beneath the water, a southern admiral's offer to defect. This tempting proposal would eventually lead to Cao Cao's downfall. And so, in the year 208 AD, during the Battle of Red Cliffs, a secret agent for the southern admiral skillfully deceived Cao Cao persuading him to link his ships with theirs for stability. However, the supposed defection was a Trojan horse, concealing fire ships that infiltrated the chained fleet, burning Cao Cao's once mighty navy. Thus, Cao Cao, once a war hero, now faced a problematic retreat that turned into chaos, leaving his vast army, once numbering in the hundreds of thousands, crumbled before unforeseen tactics. With his defeat, Cao Cao's dream of uniting China shattered and the land fractured into three kingdoms, causing Cao Cao's name to become synonymous with epic failure. The Battle of Gargamela In 331 BC, the army of Macedon under Alexander the Great and the Persian army under King Darius III clashed in a battle known as the Battle of Gagamela, having previously fought at the Battle of Isis. Following Darius' defeat at Isis, Darius led a massive Persian force during the Battle of Gagamela, and Alexander commanded a formidable army of Macedonians and Greeks. But as the two sides prepared for battle, Alexander, like a chess master, moved his pieces strategically. And so, Alexander cleverly directed his cavalry to the right of the battlefield, creating a barrier against Persian chariots. Meanwhile, a hidden infantry force lurked in the dust, adding an element of surprise. As the Persian cavalry charged, thinking they had defeated Alexander, they fell into his trap. Seizing the moment, Alexander led a decisive charge targeting Darius at the heart of his forces. In a swift and precise move, Darius fled in panic, sealing the fate of the Persian Empire. Hence, the Battle of Gagamela marked the symbolic handover of the Persian Empire to Alexander the Great, making Darius one of the biggest losers in history.
So, what are your thoughts on this? And who is the biggest loser amongst these losers? Let us know in the comment section below. And remember to hit that subscribe button. To watch more insane and unique stories, click on the video options on the screen. You won't regret it.